Hello everybody. Today you're going to learn about outgoing mail servers in Suite CRM system and how to configure them. Okay, so let's go. So in order to send out emails from your Suite CRM system, you need to, of course, set up your outgoing email server so that Suite CRM knows how to send this out. And this could be all different types of emails, for instance, system communication like forgot password or, or assignment notifications. It could also be something like campaign emails, so like, like marketing emails, and it could be something like workflows that trigger emails. In order to do this, you find uh, three different options on how to configure this. We'll get into this in a bit. But first, let me point you to the documentation here. So in case you want to read it, check out my blog post on it or check out the um, details here on the documentation from Sweet CRM. So when you just have configured your yeah, CRM system, then you see something red here. You need to have an SMTP server configured in order to send out emails. So you can click right away on this one here and you're getting to the system email settings, but there is more. Let me pull this up as well. If you go to the admin area, we're now inside the email settings here on this tab. And then on another tab, I want to open the outbound emails because there are two more, as I said. So you've got a new personal account, a new group account, and I want to open them all beside each other and go through them one by one. Quick overview, this one here is the group email account and the group email is something like support ticket or, uh, tickets or a, a general sales account, general marketing account. Then we've got a personal one and the personal account is personal. So every user can have a personal account. And then this one here, this is the system settings in the first place. And the system settings, let's start with those because you saw those you, that are needed for sending out something like um, like workflow emails, then notification emails, and forgot password stuff like this. So from name, so you here can you here you can put in your your friendly CRM system or whatever it fits for you. Then from address, you see that I already added some details which you can't delete later on because it's a required field, can't delete it easily, but you can remove this one here by clicking on those details. So first of all, let me go through this one here. So Gmail, Gmail is making it a bit more complicated. So you have to have your insecure apps enabled in order to perform this one here. Otherwise there needs to be another authentication method. Yahoo, I think she's still stemming from like long, long time ago when Yahoo was still around, I mean, yeah, it's still around, but but Yahoo Mail was something more popular when Sweet CRM or the predecessor Sugar CRM started. Microsoft Exchange, you probably all know it. It can get complicated with either of those three. The easiest usually other. Other would be used when you got your shared hosting environment, just the traditional one, nothing like like fancy cloud with Google domains or something, just the very, very traditional one which existed since 20 years. And this is the easiest to set up. You've got your shared hosting environment, you've got your web space, you've got your domain, you've got your email servers all there. And this is what I'm going to assume or try to you know, try to replay here because this is just the easiest. So if you go to your hosting provider, then they will tell you an SMTP server. And I got like a demo kind of SMTP here, which doesn't send out really. It's just for, yeah, for testing purposes. And this SMTP server is, is this one here. So, and then usually SMTP authentication. So if you don't use it, maybe you have like a very special setup, but yeah, it's very uncommon if you wouldn't use it. So. I copy the username and I remember the port already 2525, which is uncommon as well, but I can set this inside here already. So 2525 and I'm not using an encryption. Not good as well, works here because the email is not sent out as well, but 
when you're in live and production, you should be using the one with SSL or TLS enabled. So this would just encrypt your communication between your software here, Sweet CRM, and your mail server. So I copied the password as well. And now I still want to copy the from email address. It's very hard to memorize, it's just like a demo thing. It's not for, for memorizing or marketing or whatever. So, and now we've got a couple of more options that I quickly want to go through with you. So users may send as this account's identity. It's always a bit complicated. So usually users would have their own personal accounts. As you've just seen, there's a personal account option. We do this later on. And usually they should be sending out from there, from their personal account, because then you've got like personal personal communication. But there are some circumstances where you don't want to have this and then you would do this one here. That means they kind of um, route their emails through this system account here. Maybe once in a while you have a user who shouldn't be sending out emails at all, but it could still happen that during note assignment or something or like, like record assignment that there is going to be something sent out and then it's easier with doing this one here. And you've got a send test email and I would highly rec recommend this one. Don't continue here without doing the send test email because that's the most important thing that this one is working. So, and if the, this one is not working, then I suggest the following. Go to thunderbird.net, download Thunderbird, install it, try it on your server, no, try it on your computer, on your desktop, on your laptop, and set up exactly the same configuration like you've set up here. Because if it really doesn't work, maybe it's some server configuration. But if it doesn't work on Thunderbird as well, maybe the email is wrong or the SMTP mail server is wrong or something. But so far so good, it, it, it accepted it. Now I can go to my test email account as well. So I go to my inbox and I see 41 seconds ago, I received one email here. Perfect. So this was my test email and I first save it to, to really keep this here and don't do anything wrong anymore. So this one seems to be like a legacy version of the admin, which is interesting. So it could be once in a while the routing goes goes mad or something and then this happens. Usually it should not be happening. Usually you should be seeing this one here, but there's a legacy mode from um, from Sweet CRM 7 and then this could happen, but I think it's the second time that I saw it in a, in a year now. So it should be extremely rare. We have gone through this stuff here and this is working. So we have confirmed with a with an email account that the test email has been sent out. And let's continue with the other email options. So assignment notifications, just in case you go ahead and assign one contact to somebody else or a lead gets assigned by a workflow to somebody else, then the somebody else will receive an automated email from the system. You've got a new record assigned. Check it out here. So email warning notifications, same here. So if there are any warnings and then there would be notifications being sent out, delete related notes and attachment with deleted emails. So it would be possible to attach notes and, and documents and stuff to emails and to leads and so on. So if you delete those emails, um, actually, I've used it, I believe, one time ages ago. You can import those emails into your system. That makes sense if you have a, a group email account, something like cases, and then it will be imported. Then you can associate something to the email, and then it will be like a cascading delete here. Yeah, if you want this, then, as I said, like hardly ever used. Send notifications from the email address of the assigning user. That's a neat feature. So here you can even say like who assigned some, uh, some record to me. So I would keep this ticked. Then since I believe it's SweetCM 7.10, there is a new option here, which is the opt-in setting should be working with the GDPR together. Opt-in or confirmed opt-in, double opt-in would be something like 
the person who received the email, like a lead or a contact, would have actively clicked on a link and confirmed the email address. So and it's actually not required. No, this, this should not be like, um, it will be different in the US. I don't do any, any legal advice here, um, but it seems like in Europe it's not required. You just need to be able to prove when somebody has confirmed this and this is just the easiest go-to option of how to do this. Um, yeah, makes everything more secure. So from a, from a marketer's or, or IT perspective, very, very upsetting. And from a user's perspective, very good. Unfortunately, not all countries on earth um, obey this guideline or rule here and therefore you still get spam. But um, you can keep your email list definitely cleaner if you use the confirmed opt-in. So it will, will help a lot to keep your bounce rate down later on. So automatically send opt-in email. Yes, so if you have this one here and then automatically there should be an opt-in email sent out. You can select a template, go into the email templates and update or change this so that it matches your company style. And enable legacy email compose behavior. I assume, so every time you read legacy, try to ignore it. Going forward, the legacy will, will be removed more and more from Suite CRM 8 and then, yeah, just ignore it. And then there is something like a parser. So if you do inbound emails later on for your cases or for your marketing, for your personal boxes, and then you can remove those things here which can potentially harm or which can potentially bring some some insecure code into your company yeah well just use the standard setup or, or remove everything if you want to just to make it secure so these were the standard email system email settings for something like i forgot my password and um, a workflow is sending me some emails and uh, something like a notification when I am assigned uh, a new record in any module. So, and now the two other ones. Let's close this one here to have a better overview. And the one is type personal and the other one is type group. And you see it's almost the only difference here. So the personal is, is type and the group is type and it's pre-selected. You can't change this because it's just a predefined one. And the only other difference here is the owner because a personal one belongs to one user in your CRM system. So if you do this one here and then you can select one user and then you would need to write down, not need to write down, but it makes it easier if you write it something like this so username and smtp or something then you know it's the outbound email server of this specific user and here you can do exactly the same now as i did before so i'm going to spare you this one here but yeah server smtp authentication try really to avoid like a, like a or like use ssl or tls just in order to make the transfer secure your port will change automatically suggested by this one here but it could be that your email host has configured a different one so you would be able to overwrite this here then so pay attention to this one password and then from name and from address from address is usually required as well let's fill this in actually so if you have a personal address and then you would go to, so if you have a personal address, then you would usually use this from address. And then here I would write down Bastian Hammer and then maybe add company or whatever, what, what we should have as the from name. And you can add this one here as well if you have, I, I hardly use it. So sometimes you want to have in the worst case, you're receiving communication with no reply at, and, and basically it's like a system communication and yeah, you should not reply to the system, but 
please, companies, don't do this because I really, really need to communicate with you once in a while. So don't give me a, like a no reply ad. Or, but but put this reply to address inside. So if I hit reply then in my email client, and then even though it was a system communication, I would still be able to reply to this system communication and yeah, send it to the general inbox of the customer support or something. So therefore, this would be a good use case for, for this one here. And since it's a... Since it is a signature, since it's a personal account. And then let me quickly do the rest of it. So here we've got our email server and I would set this up and I use authentication. Yes, I do port 2525, which is a bit uncommon, will be probably different for you. My username, my password, and I should be able to send another test email one moment please yes an email has been sent okay that's good i can double check it here now so inboxes and i want to check it for this inbox and i've got here 11 seconds ago that was it so i go back to this one here save it and now we've got an outbound email account and then actually you see that we have two outbound email accounts. One was the system one, one is the personal one. And now we're going to look into the group account. And this is basically exactly the same like it was before. And when would you use it? I mentioned it before already. So general sales account, general email account, customer service or trouble ticket account. So maybe ticket system SMTP. It's a group one. And again, I'm going back to my surfer inboxes. And I would add this one here. It's required. It's easy to forget it because it's at the very bottom. So here I would say maybe ticket or cases, ticket system, CRM, and then maybe a company name or so. And then again, the surfer is this one here. I use authentication, username is here, port is 2525, which is uncommon, and here we've got the password. Again, I want to send a test email to make sure everything is working. Yep, seems to be fine, so I'm going to save it, and I'm going to my outbound email accounts. And as you can see now, we configured really indeed those three email accounts. One is the system at the very bottom. That was the first one. Then we configured the personal one. And last but not least, we've configured the group email account. So now we've got a nice setup with all the emails here, which are possible to use in different circumstances. And we can look into this into our next video.